Tonight on Connect the World, scared but still alive, the little boy pulled from the rubble of Syria's shelling, saved only by his mother's body. Live from CNN London, this is Connect the World. And tonight, in an exclusive interview, Turkey's Prime Minister warns that Syria's civil war could yet take a dramatic turn for the worse. We begin this hour in Syria, where new attacks today have killed at least 246 people across the country. Well, indiscriminate shelling happens so often that it appears to be a chosen tactic of the Bashar al-Assad regime. One such recent attack in Aleppo sent people racing to search for loved ones trapped under the rubble of crushed buildings. CNN's Nick Payton Walsh has an exclusive report on the aftermath. And we do warn you, it has some very graphic and disturbing images. Dawn in Aleppo brings the clatter of gunfire above. Tomorrow you can see more of Nick's exclusive reporting from Aleppo. He'll show us how rebels are fighting to take control of a once picturesque street in the city. Well, Syria's influential neighbor, Turkey, says the biggest threat from Syria right now involves weapons of mass destruction. Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan sat down with CNN's Christian Amanpour for an exclusive interview, and I asked Christian a short time ago for details. Well, indeed, he does say that that would be a red line if Syria was to use its stockpile of weapons of mass destruction. Still to come tonight, the eagle has landed. The U.S. president touches down ahead of his formal nomination at the Democratic National Convention. You're watching CNN and this is Connect the World. Hello, I'm Monita Rajpal. Welcome back. All eyes will be on former U.S. President Bill Clinton tonight at the Democratic National Convention in Charlotte, North Carolina. He will officially nominate Barack Obama as the party's candidate for November's presidential election. The president himself touchdown in Charlotte ahead of his acceptance speech tomorrow. CNN's Aisha Sasse is at the convention and she joins us now live. So lots happening there, Aisha. There we've got uh, Bill Clinton and a change of arena. Yeah, absolutely. Mother Nature is nonpartisan and she isn't cooperating with the DNC. We saw all the commotion she caused with the Republican convention in Tampa, Florida last These week. These conventions are often all about gaining momentum and stirring emotions among the electorate. And with Bill, Bill Clinton there, that'll certainly do that uh, for the DNC. But perhaps what started it all was last night's speech by the First Lady. Yeah, no doubt about that. That was an extremely powerful performance, powerful stirring speech by the First Lady. All right, Aisha, thank you very much for that, Aisha, to say there in Charlotte, North Carolina. And do uh, stay watching CNN for extensive... Until then, let's take a look at uh, what uh, other stories are making headlines uh, and connections on our world tonight. A tsunami warning has been cancelled after a magnitude 7.6 earthquake struck Costa Rica. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the quake's epicenter was 140 kilometers west of the capital, San Jose. Corruption charges for a former Chinese police official at the center of a major political scandal. Wang Lijun was once uh, the right-hand man of disgraced politician Bo Zhilai. BFM TV reports that four people have been found shot dead in a British registered car in eastern France. The report also says that a girl was found seriously injured beside the bodies near Chevaline, close to the Swiss border. Welcome back. You are watching Connect the World live from London. I'm Juanita Rajpal. Cristiano Ronaldo denies that his complaint about being glum at Real Madrid is a ploy to get more money from the club. The 27-year-old sparked a global media storm when he confessed to being sad at the Bernabeu. I'll see you at the World Sport in about an hour. All right, sounds good. All right, Mark, thank you very much for that. Still to come here on Connect the World, going for gold. One Save the Children is best known for helping some of the world's poorest families. It may come as a surprise, though, to hear the charity is launching its first ever campaign in the UK to help feed and clothe a growing number of kids. Child poverty is, of course, relative depending on where you live in the world, but the charity says some children in the UK are missing out on essentials like warm coats and regular hot meals. Matthew Chance has more. It may be one of the world's richest countries, but pockets of Britain are increasingly gripped by poverty. 
This well, last year in the UK, food banks run by the organization Trussell Trust fed over 128,000 people. That's 100% more than they did in 2020. 2010. I want to take you to take a look at this map here of the UK. The green pins show just where the food banks are across the country, and the pink pins are showing you just where they want uh, to plan to open in the future. A lot of uh, these, many of those are in the northern city of Manchester, where in 2010 nearly half of the children were in poverty and that's according to the campaign to end child poverty. We're joined now by Lawrence Chandy, an expert in global economy and development from the Brookings Institution. Thank you very much for being with us, Mr. Chandy. These children in the UK are going without essential items and that is indeed a growing concern. But are they considered poor if you compare them to children in Bangladesh or Niger? Well, it's, it's not really a fair comparison. I think you spelled that out well in the introductory piece. Um, when we talk about poverty in the, in the developing world... Poverty in the West, then. The UK is not the only developed country suffering uh, tough economic times. In June, uh, CNN reported on an orphanage in Athens, which has seen a surge in the number of Greek families unable to feed and clothe their kids. And a single mother told us giving up her children was painful, but the best option. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate that. Here with Connect the World coming up after the break, we visit Frankfurt Airport to find out how it deals with over 56 million passengers every year. Back, Frankfurt Airport is one of the world's busiest with over 150,000 passengers moving through it every day. Operations have to be tight. Sometimes that means turning around a plane of 500 people in less than two hours, and that is no mean feat, as Becky Anderson found out. You're watching Connect the World. When we come back, the Welcome man back. The brought World Wide Web has been part of life now for 22 years, but has it changed our lives for better or for worse? That is the question being answered by a new index which measures the impact of the web. While many of us can't imagine life without this seemingly vital tool, the study found that only one in three people around the world are making use of the web. So we want to take a look, a closer look, I should say, at the findings. Let's take a look here from the geographic perspective of the 61 countries here that have been uh, featured in the inaugural index. These are the, the top 10 nations that the web is having the greatest impact on the social, economic, and political lives of the citizens. No big surprise at all are Western democratic countries. Sweden, I should give you this idea, Sweden was ranked number one, followed by the United States, and then here in the United Kingdom, those countries were best at keeping the web open, free, and universal. Then the other side of the spectrum, who were the worst? Well, these countries here in red were at the bottom of the index, most of them being in Africa. Burkina Faso, Zimbabwe, and Yemen were all found to have little infrastructure and high levels of censorship, leaving their citizens largely disconnected. Now, the new index was the brainchild of the very man who created the web back in 1990, Tim Berners-Lee. Matthew Chance caught up with him on the eve of the study's launch and began by asking whether he was pleased or disappointed with how his creation has evolved. It's always been a massive ongoing project. Tim Berners-Lee there speaking to CNN's Matthew Chance. So how has the World Wide Web improved your life? Well, the team here at Connect the World wants to hear from you. Facebook.com slash CNN Connect. Have your say. The bomb that took away his sight didn't maim one former U.S. soldier's fighting spirit. And on Friday, Brad Sunder will mark the one-year anniversary of the explosion that blinded him by competing for his third Paralympic medal here in London. CNN's Aaron McLaughlin has more on this man's truly incredible journey. An incredible Paralympian. In tonight's parting shot, why did the duck cross the road? Well... We're not so sure. These are the astonishing pictures of one mother duck's attempt to guide her offspring across four lanes of fast-moving traffic in Toronto. There are a number of close calls for the feathered family, so close that at one point, the wind blown from a speeding vehicle sends the ducklings tumbling. But after a nail-biting minute or so, somehow they get to the other side safe and sound. Some... Uh, very lucky ducks indeed. I'm Monita Rajpal. That was Connect the World. Thank you for watching. We'll bring you the world headlines.